As we've shown announcements and video, right, we've got Holy Spirit Nights coming up October 4 through 6, and we're excited about it. But we said, there, we're not just having meetings to have meetings. We're not just having meetings uh, to sing some great songs or to have goosebumps or, or anything like There's a purpose to the meeting. Um, and so I wanted to go through, uh, we wanted to go through a few weeks of teaching on the Holy Spirit. Um, so we're preparing ourselves and learning about the Holy Spirit so that when Holy Spirit nights come, uh, and, uh, we believe that the Holy Spirit's going to do something that's going to blow our minds. Uh, we're going to have a better understanding. We're going to be ready for it. We're going to be prepared for it. Um, and so, uh, last Sunday, uh, Pastor Durso, uh, spoke, uh, about, uh, the Holy Spirit and then Wednesday, Jorge, and today is, uh, my assignment. And then we're going to keep going every Wednesday, Sunday until, uh, October 4th. So we're excited about it. So, uh, we're, we're just going to press forward, uh, with the Holy Spirit. Um, as I, I do that, and just so you know, I am going to read a lot of scripture, um, and it's going to be quick. And so if you have your phones, you could just take pictures of the, the scriptures so you could study them later and go back to them. Uh, it's quicker than, than just trying to take notes because I, I fly through some of the, because there's a lot of information. There's a lot to cover today. Um, but one thing I'm not sure if you knew uh, was that uh, back in Israel when Jesus turned water into wine, um, that some people actually bottled that wine and, made, and, and, and started their own store and they called it Holy Spirits. It didn't do so good in the 930, but it did worse with you guys. Uh, so as I introduce, uh, it is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. This is the third uh, person in the Trinity, the third person in the Trinity. But ladies and gentlemen, last but not least... Uh, the Holy Spirit. Ready? Acts 2. Uh, the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. Uh, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Talking about the disciples, there was 120 of them. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them all 120, uh, were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. My first point is, who is he? He is not an it. He is a person with power and a purpose. He is God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are all God. In Acts chapter 5, when uh, Peter is dealing with this couple, Ananias and Sapphira, that uh, they had sold some property and, and, and lied about how much they actually gave, uh, he actually says to them, he says, uh, he says, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit? And then uh, the very next verse, he says, you have not lied just to men but to God. The Holy Spirit's God. Uh, because he's God, he's omnipresent, we can't hide from him. We learn in Psalm 139, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence if I go to the depths you're there, right? Uh, we know those verses. We usually think that the Holy Spirit makes his, his, his debut appearance there in Acts chapter 2 or in the, in the New Testament, but that's not correct. He is and always was just like Jesus. Uh, I mean, we just read about him in Psalm, in the book of Psalm. Uh, we read about in Matthew 1, verse 18, that, that uh, Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. So obviously he wasn't born in Acts chapter 2. Listen, he was even involved at creation. Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. He was all throughout the Old Testament. The Spirit came upon certain judges and warriors and prophets in a way that gave them extraordinary power. All three, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all three always existed, always involved throughout the Bible. The Holy Spirit hovered at creation, rested on Jesus in his baptism, rested on the disciples uh, in the upper room, and today he rests in us. He's our advocate, he's our defender, he's our teacher. John 14 says, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I've said to you and help you and be with you forever, spirit of truth. 
The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. Sidebar, you know, sometimes we're like, hey, I want Jesus to come into my heart. Uh, that's kind of like Christianese. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. The Holy Spirit lives in us. He is our comforter. He is our guidance counselor. I love the, that, that, that term guidance counselor. You know, when you're in school, you go to your guidance counselor. You go, hey, what's next? What's the best course to take? How do I move on to the next level? How do I get uh, to this program? This, the Holy Spirit is our guidance counselor, guiding us through life. He's the revealer of truth. He helps us to understand. 1 Corinthians 2 uh, says, uh, What no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. These are the things God has revealed to us by the Spirit. He reveals things. He doesn't create. He reveals. Uh, so, so just like if I was to take this, the Bible, and I hide it, right? This is revealing. It's uncovering. It's unveiling. Uh, the Holy Spirit unveils, uncovers. Uh, he, he, he brings clarity. He helps us understand. He intercedes for us. He prays for us. Romans 8, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the minds of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. He convicts us of sin, John 16, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. He equips us and he helps us to grow. There's fruit of the Spirit, right? Love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. There are gifts of the Spirit. Uh, tongues, interpretation, healing, prophecy, wisdom, knowledge, faith, discerning between spirits. Uh, we'll, we'll get into some of that in a bit, I promise. Uh, but both are to build his church and edify the body of Christ. Now, now Jesus actually tells his disciples, and Danny mentioned it uh, uh, a bit ago. He says, it is uh, to your advantage that I go away. This is Jesus, 33 years on earth, three years with his disciples, doing all this incredible ministry. He's like, hey guys, I know we had a great, we had a great run, we're, we're doing some great stuff, but it is your, to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the Holy Spirit, will not come to you, but if I depart, I will send him to you. Jesus is like, I'm going to accomplish my assignment here on earth. But the next phase of everything that's about to happen can't happen if I stay here. I've got to go and I've got to send you the Holy Spirit. Uh, and, and, and trust me, this is better. Trust me, this is to your advantage. It's sad that so many Christians don't take advantage of this advantage. The fact that we have the Holy Spirit with us at all times, living in us, the power of the Holy Spirit. Who is he? The Holy Spirit is an equal powerful part of who God is. We need him uh, in our lives. Uh, he's a conduit to become who God is calling us to be and do what God is calling us to do. Without him, we are powerless. It's not enough to just to believe it's the Father and the Son, right? That, that's there, and then the Holy Spirit's kind of, no, no, no. Last but not least, last but not least. They're equal. They, they work in harmony. Uh, they, 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 they work with each other. And the uniqueness of the Holy Spirit is that his presence is within us. He empowers us to live victoriously uh, for the cause of Christ and the glory of our Father. Amen. Two, how and when do you get him? How and when do you get him? First, let's see how he, the Holy Spirit gets us. Titus 3, 5, he saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1, when you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. In Romans 10, uh, there, it's the verse uh, that tells us how to be saved. It tells us you must confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. That's how you are saved. That's Romans 10, 9. But uh, in, in, in 1 Corinthians 12, 3, uh, actually tells Tells us that we wouldn't even be able to say that Jesus is Lord if it were not for the Holy Spirit. So one part it says to be saved you gotta uh, uh, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and over here you wouldn't even be able to do that if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit. Salvation is, the, is purposed by the Father, accomplished by the Son, and made possible by the Holy Spirit. So when we get saved the Holy Spirit comes to live in us. 
We are temples of the Holy Spirit. This is massive. I, I love this because when you look at the Old Testament, you would see a temple or the tabernacle. This was the place where God is coming to meet with man. This is where heaven is coming to meet with earth. This is where the, the divine is coming to meet with humanity, where the supernatural is coming to meet with the natural. And here now, we're, we're called temples of the Holy Spirit. We are the meeting place. We are the meeting place. That is massive. Now, according to Romans 8, 9, if he isn't living in us, then we do not belong to God. But if he is living in us, then we do belong to God. So when do you get him? When you believe. This is our first mutual encounter with the Holy Spirit. He convicts us of our sin. He shows us that none of us uh, can live up to the righteousness of Jesus. He reveals to us that there's judgment coming to those that die without a Savior. As we repent, as we confess our sins, we receive the gift of salvation. Uh, the Holy Spirit regenerates our dead inner uh, human spirit, which now becomes sensitive to the spiritual things of God. If it were not for the Holy Spirit, all of us would be on our way to hell. So we have him. We have him. Done. When do we get him? If you're saved, you have him. If you're not, we will give you uh, an opportunity at the end of this service, uh, and I would love to help you through that. Um, but if you're saved, if you've confessed uh, with your mouth and believed in your heart that Jesus is Lord, uh, uh, and you are saved, you have the Holy Spirit. So I have the Holy Spirit. Uh, how come I can't speak in tongues? If I don't speak in tongues, do I really have the Holy Spirit? If you are saved, you have the Holy Spirit, period. You saw that? Period. Somebody say period. Thank you, Pastor Cheryl. Now, there is a second big encounter of the Holy Spirit. When he baptizes a believer, like what happened in Acts chapter 2, it is available to all. This is for everyone. I, I want to address this real quick. Uh, I, I go through, uh, we're going to go through some of this uh, real quick because Holy Spirit nights are coming, and, and I want to make sure that uh, we know what's happening. We're, we're, we have an understanding of what's happening. Uh, and, and listen, during Holy Spirit nights, I don't want the weird stuff. I don't want the safe stuff. I just want the Holy Spirit. If it's the Holy Spirit, I want it. If it's not, I don't want it. I don't need sensational stuff. I don't need dry stuff. I just, I'm like, God, would you do whatever you want to do? Manifest yourself however you want to manifest yourself. Whatever that looks like, as long as it's you, then I want it. I don't need to filter you. I don't need to say, Holy Spirit, hold up. Like, it's funny, like, we're like, don't get too weird because the people might think that, you know, this is a weird church. And, and, and like, let me filter you. Let me help you out because I really know the people. And, you know, you don't want to. No, no, no. If it's the Holy Spirit, he's going to do what he's going to do. And we're going to let him do what he does. Now, most times in the Bible, most times in the Bible, where there is a baptism of the Holy Spirit, whether it's on somebody or a group of people, uh, there is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. It is usually tongues or prophecy. I do not believe that if you do not manifest tongues or prophecy, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have not been baptized by the Holy Spirit. But I do believe that baptism of the Holy Spirit comes with some sort of evidence. Amen. I do believe that. And tongues is an evidence, but it is not the only evidence. Uh, although it is funny that we focus mostly on tongues. We're like, hey, uh, do you speak in tongues? As if like that's kind of like a, um, I don't know, like a credential, like a spiritual credential. Uh, like that's better than, yet, yeah, I mean, if you read 1 Corinthians, Paul talks so much about tongues. But he's like, hey, those are great, but uh, desire love. Like instead of do you speak in tongues, hey, do you love? I'd rather do that because, you know, the Bible says that they, people outside, they'll know that we're Christians by, if we speak in tongues, no, by our love. But tongues is important, and so I want to address it. Uh, I, I, want to, I want to go through this, uh, and I do believe that you must be baptized by the Holy Spirit uh, to have the power you need to serve the Lord the way he's intended you to. So, uh, real quick, uh, tongues is a language. It is not j gibberish. It is unknown uh, by the person that speaks it. I do believe there is two different kinds of speaking in tongues. One is a private prayer language uh, where the intended audience there is God. 
There is another one that is a, a public uh, speaking in tongues, which is always followed. This is the gift of tongues, which is always followed by an interpretation, the gift of interpretation. And the intended audience there is the church. These two gifts are included in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, like healing, prophecy, miraculous powers, the ones I said before. Uh, they are gifts of the Holy Spirit. They are freely given. They're not human talents. They're not party tricks. Uh, they are gifts uh, which the Holy Spirit uh, freely gives out. Uh, and, and, and that's why I made the distinction between fruit and gifts. Gifts are given. They're instantaneous. Fruit is developed. Uh, but the gifts are a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. They are, important, they are important to the life of the body of the church and the fulfillment and the mission of the church. Uh, so uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of the Holy Spirit, he gives these gifts. Now, sometimes when you get a gift, you look at it, you're like, how do I use this? Then those kind of gifts always come with an instruction manual. Here's our instruction manual. I, I, pray, for, I pray for all the gifts. I say, God, I go through the list, and we don't really know how many there are, but there's, there's a bunch. But I'm like, God, I want all the gifts. I want everything that you have for me. Uh, I, I name the gifts. I say, I want healing. I want prophecy. I want, I want these things. I want it so that we can edify the church. Uh, and then I've got to go in Scripture. I read Romans. I read 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. And I'm going through. I'm like, God, show me how to use the gifts that you've given me. So get in your word. Get in your word. That's the instruction manual. So through the power of the Holy Spirit, the helper, the advocate, the revealer, the convictor, the comforter, the counselor, uh, we, we become more like Jesus and are guided to do the Father's will and, and can actually do where, where Jesus is like, hey, uh, when the Holy Spirit comes, you're going to do greater, greater things than even me. This is where this part comes in. He's given us gifts. He's given this power of the Holy Spirit so that we can do miracles. We're not just singing about it. We're, we're believing that miracles are going to happen. Anybody say amen? amen? The Holy Spirit plays a major role in our salvation. The Holy Spirit baptizes us with power. And we are encouraged, we are encouraged, we are encouraged to ask the Holy Spirit to fill us up on a regular basis. When you feel depleted, when you need strength. Ask him to replenish you. Ask him to fill you like, like cars need gas and we need oxygen in our lungs. God, would you fill me again? Would you? I, I can't live on la the, the last breath I took. I need another breath and another breath and another breath. And another, just like I'm, I'm breathing, I need the Holy Spirit. I need, I need a fresh outpouring. I can't live without the Holy Spirit. So we talked about who he is. Talked about when you get him both when you get them when you're saved and then the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, and last but not least, why do you need him? Why do you need him? Um, remember, I think, I think it was 2012, I think, 2012 when uh, Hurricane Sandy hit. And uh, Hurricane Sandy hit and the Legacy Center had kind of just really started and uh, we were like, man, let, let's get out there. Let, let's go uh, make sure we, we bring all these people that don't have, you know, that, that they're in the Rockaways. Let's, let's get them water and let's get them all the non-perishables and uh, cans of soup and, and all this stuff. Like, we're like, let, let's go do it. We went to BJ's, Costco, we went all over, we bought everything we could. We, we got all the donations. I mean, it was, it was an incredible time. So we get, we fill the trucks up and we get over to the Rockaways and you know, there's these big buildings that got like 40 floors and, and, and we're looking up, we're like, all right guys, let's go. And we, you know, of course, you know, I wanna be like, like the strongest one. I, I grab like three cases of water and I go over and I'm, I'm like, yeah, let's do this. And, and we go put it down and we go to the elevator and I'm now walking up 40 flights of stairs with three cases of water. Press it again, press it again. Elevator never comes. Why? No power, no service. Out of power, out of service. The last words of Jesus, Luke 24, I'm going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high, then ending his gospel, going right into the next book, the book of Acts, uh, Acts 1, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You will receive 
power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Why? Because you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the er ends of the earth. Wait, don't move. Wait here. Don't move. You can't go on without this. What are you talking about, Jesus? We just had the best three years ever. We just had, I mean, the best seminary, the best Bible school. I mean, we saw all your miracles. We heard all your sermons, all your parables. Like, we, had, we were with God for three days. What else could we possibly need? He says, no, don't move. Don't move. You, you can't go on without this. Uh, the, what, what I've called you to do, like, 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 like you cannot do what I've called you to do if you don't wait. Because you won't have the power to do. You won't have the power to do. You won't have the power to do what I've called you to do, so you got to wait. Even Jesus did not do any miracles or start his ministry without the Holy Spirit descending on him in the form of a dove at his baptism. Uh, Acts 10 says, God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and power, and he went around doing good and healing. Luke 4, Isaiah 61, uh, it's the same verse. It says, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me. Why? To proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Acts 2 Joel 2, again, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams, even on my servants, both men and women. I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Guys, I am believing for some, for, for some supernatural stuff. I'm believing that some of our young men and our young women are going to speak in tongues, are going to prophesy, are going to manifest some stuff. I'm praying for my girls. I'm praying for Martinez kids and the Chaco kids and all of our kids. I'm, I'm praying that, that, that as, as we're sitting in Holy Spirit nights, we're going to look next to us and be like, what in the world is happening right now with my kids? I'm praying the Holy Spirit falls the things we've been praying for, especially for our young people, that we're going to be like, are you kidding me? Misfits are going to prophesy. Misfits are going to see visions. Misfits are going to see dreams. <laughs> Under the power of the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, Acts 13, the disciples being filled with the Spirit, the Word of God spread throughout the whole region. Uh, Acts 6, choose seven men full of wisdom and full of the Holy Spirit. Why? To serve tables. Even to be waiters, they had to be full of the Holy Spirit. Acts 1, filled with power to be my witnesses. Ephesians 5, talking to Christians, the church in Ephesus. It's talking about having healthy relationships. It talks about husbands and wives and, and, and uh, parents and kids and employers and employees. And he says, hey, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't get filled on wine. Don't get filled on those spirits. Why? Because whatever you drink from, you become contaminated with, you get filled with, uh, you get filled with those contents, and it makes you act a certain way, right? Some of you know. I know that too. It says don't get filled with that, because that's going to make you act a certain way. No, no, be filled with the Holy Spirit, because that's going to make you act a certain way and you need this for your relationships to have healthy relationships with your husband with your wives with your children with your parents with your with your boss with your with your employees whatever stage with your friends with your community with with everybody around you with your neighbors if you're filled with your whole with the holy spirit it's going to help you act a certain way to the people around you I go through all these because there's not one place and there's so many more examples but there is not one place not one place, not one place in the entire Bible that someone is filled with the Holy Spirit and is not followed by a verb. Every single place in the Bible where it talks about the filling of the Holy Spirit, it is always followed by an action, by service, by doing, by blessing, by imparting. There is always a verb after being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's about doing. Uh, we're, it's, it's power for service. It's power for service. And so I want to be filled with power for service to do. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to be so filled that there's an overflow, that, that it's overflowing from my life and it, it's a 
affecting everybody around me and it's affecting the atmosphere and it's affecting the environment and it's affecting the circumstances. It's affecting the news that's coming in my life. I want to be filled and spilled. You know when you grab a toothpaste, right? Uh, a tube of toothpaste. If you grab it and you squeeze it, what comes out? Toothpaste. Why? Because it's filled with toothpaste. We go through life and sometimes we're squeezed. Problems happen and circumstances happen and we get bad news and, and we're squeezed. And whatever we're filled with will come out. Be careful with what you're filling yourself with. I don't want to contaminate the environment that's around me because I have a bad spill, because I'm filled with something else, because I'm filling my life with whatever movie or whatever music or this or that, and, and I'm not filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that when I'm squeezed, the Holy Spirit is coming out, and that's affecting my atmosphere, and it's affecting the news in my life, and it's affecting the environment. Man, when the enemy comes at me, when the enemy comes at me, when the enemy, when the enemy presses me, when, when I get that bad report, when I get that bad medical report or, or bad financial report or, or someone says someone, someone rubs me the wrong way, man, I, 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 I could try to, I can't do it on my own. I can't handle this by myself. No matter what is happening in your life, when the enemy is waging war against you, it is not by power, it is not by might, it is by that's it. I can't do this on my own. I can't live this life on my own. I need his spirit, so I want to be so filled. I want the fruit of the Holy Spirit being developed in me. I want the gifts of the Holy Spirit being ma manifested through me. Uh, and listen, I, I named a, a, a bunch. I, I don't know how many gifts there are. I, I always say when, when asked tough questions, this is my favorite emoji. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, there's, there's different lists in different parts of the Bible. I don't know. Here's what I believe. I believe there is as many gifts of the Holy Spirit as there are needs in the body of Christ. Amen. However many needs, that's how many gifts. And God's going to give them to us so that we could serve others. Listen, 1 Peter 4.10, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others others so that in all things God may be praised. This gift is not for you. The purpose of spiritual gifts is to edify, build up, strengthen, exhort, encourage, comfort the church, and ultimately that God may be praised. I'm asking musicians to come up and singers come help me. Real quick, I read Acts 2, 1 through 4 in the very beginning. Right before this, Jesus is preparing his disciples. He's like, all right, guys, we're going to do some awesome stuff, like, like things about to get good, like, like it's, it's going to be incredible. Uh, uh, we're we're going to do, you're going to do greater works than all, all the things that you saw. You saw me heal the blind guy. You saw me heal the, the, the lame guy and the, the guy that went through the roof. Like you saw me do all that stuff. Man, you guys are going to do so much more stuff than that. Disciples are like, yeah, let's go. Like... I mean, they, they, got, they, got, they got Jesus with them. Like, like, this is, like, this is the man. This is the, like, they got the goat with them. They got the lamb, not the goat. Did I do that right, AJ? That was AJ's joke. He was like, you should say this. They got the squad. They're ready for whatever. And then Jesus dies. Jesus is like, wait, don't go anywhere, wait in Jerusalem. And then Jesus dies and goes back to heaven. And the disciples are like, um, that was anticlimactic. Now what? And a bunch of disciples left. They were like, that's not what I was expecting. And they left. And only 120 of them stay. And they stay in Jerusalem. And they say, hey, we're going to wait. We don't know what's coming. Well, we don't know what this is going to look like. But we're going to wait. I believe that Holy Spirit nights, we're going to do a lot of waiting. And that's okay, but I'm also expecting God to show up and do something absolutely mind-blowing. So we know the story. This is Pentecost. This is 50 days. They're waiting 50 days. And they're in the upper room. And all of a sudden, Holy Spirit comes down and comes with tongues of fire. And it says they separate and rest on each of them. It goes, poof, 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 poof. everybody, everybody gets. 
They start to speak in other tongues. It was incredible, amazing. Listen, all, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the people that were outside the upper room that are hearing this are like, what's going on? These guys are crazy. These guys are weird. These guys are drunk. But they also heard them speaking in languages that they knew that they didn't know, and it was languages that, that were their languages. So they said, all right, they seem drunk, they seem weird, they seem crazy, but something's real happening because they're speaking in languages that are our languages, and they don't know those languages, so, so something's happened. And then all of a sudden, right, the disciples leave the upper room, 120 of them leave the upper room, and they spill into the streets. They were filled and spilled. They spill into the streets, and, and then Peter gives this incredible message where 3,000 people get saved. Not because he had an awesome sermon with three points and a cool title. It was because the people saw evidence of the Holy Spirit. They saw the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And he, because Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit and his words were anointed by the Holy Spirit and came out of his mouth. Now, now here, here's, here's what I want to talk about though. A lot of Christians, they're comfortable in the upper room. Oh, it's nice in the upper room. Uh, I'm with all my friends in the upper room. We're singing nice songs in the upper room. We're nestled by the fire in the upper room. Like, like, we're, like we're all together. Like, like it, it is safe in the upper room. It is safe in the upper room. But no one got saved in the upper room. Had the disciples stayed in the upper room, the church stays 120 people and dies. I love the upper room. I, we need the upper room. We're safe in the upper room, but people outside aren't. We've got the presence of God in the upper room, but people outside don't. We've got we to experience the upper room. I think we do that on Wednesdays at our prayer meetings and Sundays and community groups, and you can experience that in your own devotions in the morning. But you can't stay there. You have to go outside into the real world. You, ha you have to take the upper room with you so that it could affect everybody around you, so that other people could experience the same presence, the, the same anointing, that, 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 and then as you speak, that as you speak, people are gonna see the fruit of the Holy Spirit, they're gonna see gifts of the Holy Spirit manifesting through you, they're gonna hear the words because you're anointed in the Holy Spirit, they're gonna hear words that are coming out that are so bathed in the Holy Spirit that it's gonna change their lives forever. I wanna be filled and spilled. I want, to be, I want there to be such an overflowing that it affects everything around me. Even in, my, even in my regular life, like I want to be so filled that it spills into my relationship with my kids. I want to be so filled that it spills into my marriage or it spills into my finances or it spills into my conversations, it spills into my attitude, it spills into my decision-making process. I'm like, God, would you fill me? But it's not this for this, it's this for that. This is great. I love what we do at church. I love that. Let, let, let's get filled. Let, let's sing. Let, let's do all that stuff. But if we stayed here, we don't grow. Nobody else gets better. And I don't know about you, but we've been called to serve. We've been called to impart. We've been called to bless. We've been called to do. It is the reason for being filled with the Holy Spirit. Would you stand with me? Would you put out your hands as Danny sings? God, I, 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 need, a, I, I, need, I need your Holy Spirit. I need you to fill me. I got people in my life that don't know you. I got people in my life that, that, that need a different reaction from me. I got people in my life that, that their lives need to be changed. God, God, would you use me? Would you fill me so much that it would spill into those relationships? Change my life so their lives could be changed.